Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being with us this morning to celebrate the sacred liturgy of the Epiphany. My name is Father John Kurgan. I'm the pastor at Holy Cross Church in DeWitt, and I'm pleased to be with all of you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your, your spirit. spirit. We come to this liturgy to honor Jesus, the newborn King, as did the Magi from the East. My brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the Amen. highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God our Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans and camels shall fill you Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with your judgment and our King, and with your justice, the King's Son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every knee shall on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the dawn be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. My friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and we have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has bitten, been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gold, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. And that, I suppose, seems to be an odd thing now that we're a couple of weeks past the actual Christmas Day celebration that we all love and so much. And yet, really, Epiphany is the apex of the Christmas season because we hear about the Magi. We hear about those who search. And they're searching for goodness. They're not searching for material gifts, and they're not searching for decorations. They're searching for one who they believe has a promise of fulfillment, something that they cannot gain for themselves. And in that, as they search, you can feel that their joy is increasing. You know, searching is not easy. We spend our whole lives doing it, searching for truth and justice and searching for self-worth, and yet the Magi are out searching for a child, and when they come to that child, they are filled with great expectation and joy and what that future could mean for the child and for them. And yet, Herod, Herod tells them in a lie that he wants to go and worship that child and to return to him and let them know where the child is so he can go and worship. What he's going to do is go and kill the child because the child is a threat. Herod doesn't see any joy in this. Herod sees Christ as a threatening person from the outside. Herod himself is evil. In our own world, I mean, don't we face evil all the time? Each day, it's looking to pervade our own lives. And this may seem like an odd thing to think about at Christmas time, but, you know, what is Christmas other than joy and its expectation and hope for the future? When we wish somebody a Merry Christmas, we have something in mind for them, meaning that not joy in this world necessarily, but joy in the next, that we're celebrating the birth of Christ, and Christ we know is going to go to his own cross. And he's going to resurrect so when we die, we have new life with him. That's the ultimate gift that we search and look for. Yet so often, you hear it said that, you know, Christmas only lasts a day, or even if they're faithful, they say it lasts a season, and then it's sort of over. You know, and the decorations come down, and perhaps our hearts turn away from this joy of Christmas, and we go about our daily lives, and evil slowly continues to come back in. We forget that joy of Christmas. We also oftentimes lament the fact that Christmas doesn't seem to mean as much to us when we're not children any longer, when we get older. You know, and how wrong that is. We're thinking about the ideal of Christmas, with the gifts under the Christmas tree and the joy and the expectation that that brings children. That really is a precursor to what the real joy of God is. Only as adults do we really understand who Christ is. Only as adults do we understand that the promise of salvation is given to us that day, that that story begins to play out in Epiphany, and that we too are searchers, and we have to be able to find that in our lives, and we have to be able to claim it as our own and allow that gift of faith that God gives us to flourish. And yet as we get older, sometimes we feel that that gift, instead of flourishing, may be dying. How mistaken we are. The gift that God gives us is meant to grow within our hearts, not just during the Christmas season, but each day. And it's really how we share that gift with other people, how we evangelize other people. No matter what our condition in life, we still can pray for them. We still can talk about our beliefs. We can still live our beliefs out in the way that we conduct ourselves. But the surest way to let someone know that we've lost our belief in Christ is to let Christmas go when we pack the ornaments away, to return to our past life. And that way, 
I wouldn't say we become Herod, but we may understand him more closely. We need to always make sure that we rejoice. The greatest way perhaps we can do that after next week, which is the conclusion of the Christmas season with the baptism of the Lord, after that maybe we still wish people a Merry Christmas. Imagine the odd look you would get. And yet it will remind them that Christ himself is the gift. And if they don't know that, it might be our job, our mission in life, to help them search. My friends, let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, we share a living tradition, a glorious promise for the light of Christ continues to shine for all people. Let us pray for men and women of all languages, races, and cultures. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church, that she may welcome all who seek peace and truth into her fold, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of a world in darkness, that their leaders may be drawn to the dawning brightness of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a universal charity, that all bigotry, narrowness, and racism may be driven from our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of humble worship in our lives, that we may adore Jesus in the Eucharist with the devotion of the Magi. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that eternal light may shine on them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, your Son is light from light, your glowing sign to all the nations. As we pray for the people of your world, help us to strengthen the bonds of unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the same time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
of the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere the true affection, the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <coughs> and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everyone. So-